are going very well today we are going to discuss very first lesson of physics of 10th standard current electricity in this lesson we will be discussing about the different questions like what is electricity what constitutes electricity how it flows in the conductors and what are the different factors which uh, affects the flow of the electric current in an electric circuit so before going to all these questions at first we must know about the charge because when we talk about electric current actually we are talking about current of charges because like when we say it is water current actually it is flow of water when we say air current it is flow of air similarly when we say electric current actually we are talking about the flow of the charges so charge is a physical quantity because of which any matter experiences magnetic force when it is kept in electromagnetic field kehne ka matlab hai ki matter ko uski magnetism ki property jo impart karta hai as a physical quantity of any matter or present in any matter is called as charge and charge ko measure kiya jata hai coulomb mein uska aisa unit hota hai coulomb dekhiye charge ki kuch properties yahan par hum discuss karne wale hain charges do type ke hote hain positive charge and negative charge and every matter possesses positive as well as negative charges okay positive charges प्रोटॉन्स के ऊपर प्रेजेंट होते हैं और नेगेटिव चार्जेस आर प्रेजेंट ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड अगर हम बात करें पॉजिटिव चार्जेस की तो पॉजिटिव चार्जेस आर एसोसिएटेड विद द न्यूक्लियस ऑफ एन एटम एंड नेगेटिव चार्जेस आर एसोसिएटेड विद द आउटर मोस्ट शेल ऑफ एनी एटम एंड अगर हम कंडक्टर की बात करें तो कंडक्टर आर दो सब्सटेंसेस विच हाउ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स मीन द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच आर कैपेबल ऑफ moving freely those substances will be called as conductor in the language of current electricity and the insulators are those substances which don't have free electrons jinke paas free electron ka presence nahi hai un substances ko kaha jayega insulators dekhi charge ka aisa unit coulomb hota hai charge positive and negative aise do type ke hai चार्जेस के बीच में अट्रैक्टिव एज वेल एज रिपल्सिव इंटरक्शन होता है अपोजिट चार्जेस हमेशा एक को अट्रैक्ट करते हैं और सिमिलर चार्जेस के बीच में देर इज रिपल्शन किन्हीं दो चार्जेस के बीच के अट्रैक्शन की अगर हम बात करें सो इट इज गिवन बाय दी कूलम्स लॉ विच स्टेट दैट दोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन बिटवीन टू चार्जेस इज ऑलवेज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू दी प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दी चार्जेस ऑन दो particles and is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them so according to the coulomb's law force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is given by f is equal to k into q1 into q2 divided by r square it means that the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them again charges can neither be created nor be destroyed this is called as conservation of charges see protons and electrons are the elementary particles having charges on it protons always possess positive charges and electrons always possess negative charges yaad rahe if an atom loses electrons in that case the atom acquires positive charges and if atom gains electrons in that case it acquire negative charges so this is short introduction about the charges now we will proceed to the next topic of the lesson the question is how many coulomb of charges constitutes one electron means how many charges of coulomb are present on one electron so let's solve the numerical one coulomb is equal to 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons 
it means that one electron must be equal to one by six into ten to the power eighteen coulomb. It means that one electron possesses zero point one six into ten to the power negative eighteen coulombs. It can be written as one electron is equal to one point six into ten to the power negative nineteen coulomb of charges. Okay, so one point six into ten to the power negative nineteen coulomb of charges constitutes one electron. So one electron possesses one point six into ten to the power negative nineteen coulomb of negative charges, and one proton possesses same quantity of charge that is 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 coulomb of positive charges understood now in short we will discuss the concept of conductors and insulators i already told you that ki any matter is made up of protons and electrons protons are centrally located in an atom they are the part of the nucleus of an atom and because of that protons cannot be donated or protons cannot be given but electrons are present in the shells of an atom orbits of an atom and the electrons which are present in the outermost shell of an atom are called as free electrons so as per the concept of the electricity conductors must be those substances which have large number of free electrons and insulators must be those substances which don't have large number of free electrons so basically we can say that the presence of free electrons makes the substances good conductor of electricity and absence of free electrons makes the substances insulators now the next one is concept of voltage which is also called as potential difference which is one of the very important topic in order to understand the flow of electric current dear students under normal condition there is a random movement of the electrons inside the conductor but the electrons are moving haphazardly in different directions and because of that they do not constitute electric current basically current is the flow of charges rate of flow of charges rather but the problem is that ki agar kisi ekhade electron ko ya proton ko ek jagah se dusri jagah move karana hai to iske liye us charge ko move karane ke liye kuch work karne ki zarurat hoti hai now the question arises ki why there is need to do work basically an electron or proton which is to be moved from one place to another place is surrounded by many other electrons and protons i mean to say that electron or a charge that is to move is surrounded by many other charges may be positive or negative charges and because of that the charge which has to move from one place to another place experiences opposing forces from the charges present in its surrounding those opposing forces can be attractive or can be repulsive so in order to move the charge from one point to another point it has to overcome those opposing forces and in order to oppose those forces there is need to do some work i mean to say that without doing work charges won't be able to move from one place to another place this can be explained by one of the example like suppose there are two water tanks present at same level and are connected with a pipe and suppose water is filled in those tanks at same level what do you think from which tank to which tank is it from a to b or b to a water will move the answer must be the water will not be able to move from a to b nor from b to a the reason is both are at same level and as both are at same level therefore both of them are having same energy i'm talking about potential energy actually this concept is governed by the gravity concept of gravity same concept we will apply in electric current also electric circuit also but 
it will not be in terms of gravity but surely there must be energy changes between two points where the charge has to move i mean to say that there should be difference in the energy between two points in order to get the flow of charges from one point to the other this difference in the potential difference in the energy between two points so as to move charge from one of the point to the other is called as potential difference let me explain it in the language of physics let us suppose q charge is to be moved from point a to point b in order to move it from point a to point b there is need to have more energy at point a and less energy at point b then only it will be possible to move charge from point a to point b so the energy which is present at point a is electric potential at point a and the energy which is present at point b will be called as electric potential at point b now the electric potential at point b and electric potential at point a it should have some difference this difference in the electric potentials between these two points is called as potential difference or voltage so it can be defined as work done required to move q charges from one of the point in an electric circuit to the other is called as potential difference between two points it is given by v is equal to work done upon number of charges now voltage is measured in terms of volt equal to work done is measured in joules and q is measured in coulomb therefore 1 volt will be equal to 1 joule per coulomb i mean to say that the potential difference between two points can be called as 1 volt if the 1 joule of work is done to move 1 coulomb of charge from one of the point in an electric field to the other okay so this is potential difference between those two points now i'll try to demonstrate the concept by using very simple activity try to understand i hope by performing this experiment we will definitely get the topic of the uh, sorry concept of the topic voltage dear students let us suppose this is a conductor and as obvious the conductor is having large number of electrons as well as protons ab dekho mere hath mein ek ball hai aur ye ball maan ke chaliye charge ko represent karna hai jis charge ko is wire mein se move karna hai ye point a hai ye point b hai point a se point b tak is charge ko move karna hai ab ye चार्ज देखिए इस कंडक्टर के अंदर प्रेजेंट है लेकिन ये चार्ज अभी मूव नहीं कर रहा है ओके ओवरऑल तो अपनी पोजीशन के आजू बाजू में मानो वो वाइब्रेट कर रहा है लेकिन पॉइंट ए से पॉइंट बी तक जब तक ये मूव नहीं करेगा तब तक इलेक्ट्रिक करंट फ्लो हो रहा है ऐसा नहीं कह सकते सो लेट सी वॉट मेक्स इट फ्लो फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए टू पॉइंट बी एंड दैट विल एक्चुअली रिप्रेजेंट वोल्टेज सो लेट मी Uh, demonstrate the electric current flow of current by using this uh, small concept look at this main is board ko idhar se upar utha raha hu aur ab is ball ki movement chalu ho rahi hai dekha aap logo ne bachcho we use battery or cell to maintain potential difference in an electric circuit bachcho potential difference ko measure karne ke liye jo unit use kiya jata hai that unit is volt and device which is used to measure the potential difference is voltmeter but you have to keep it voltmeter ko hamesha circuit mein un do points ke across mein connect kiya jata hai jin do points ke across mein voltage ko measure karna hota hai okay aur voltmeter ko hamesha circuit mein parallelly connect kiya jata hai because do point ke across mein connect karna ultimately it is parallelly connect karna ho gaya hai अगर हम वोल्टमीटर को पैरेलली कनेक्ट करते हैं तो कॉन्सेप्ट ये कहता है पैरेलल कॉम्बिनेशन का कि अगर दो डिवाइसेस को 
हम दो कंडक्टर्स को अगर हम पैरेललली कनेक्ट करें तो ऐसे केस में सर्किट का टोटल रेजिस्टेंस बहुत कम हो जाता है और अगर टोटल रेजिस्टेंस बहुत कम हो जाता है तो ऐसे केस में सर्किट से करंट का फ्लो बढ़ जाता है नाउ द करंट दैट इज फ्लोइंग थ्रू द मेन सर्किट विल डिवाइड इनटू टू पार्ट्स ओके सम ऑफ द करंट विल पास थ्रू द मेन सर्किट एंड सम ऑफ द करंट विल पास थ्रू द वोल्टमीटर नाउ जस्ट इमेजिन अगर वोल्ट मीटर का रेजिस्टेंस हमने कम रखा रेजिस्टेंस का मतलब होता है करंट को अपोज करने की एबिलिटी अगर मान के चलिए वोल्ट मीटर का रेजिस्टेंस कम है सो व्हाट डू यू थिंक मोर करंट कहां से फ्लो होने वाला है ऑब्वियसली ज्यादा करंट वोल्ट मीटर से फ्लो होने वाला है एंड इट मस्ट नॉट बी देयर एंड देयर फोर वोल्ट मीटर हमेशा हाई रेजिस्टेंस मटेरियल से बनाए जाते हैं इट मींस वोल्ट मीटर इज हाई रेजिस्टेंस डिवाइस so that more and more current will pass through the main circuit and less current will pass through the voltmeter bahut bar yahan par question aate hain bachcho ke ki voltmeter ko high resistance device kyu banaya jata hai so answer hota hai ki voltmeter ko parallelly connect karna hai aur parallelly connect karna hai isi wajah se usme se kam se kam current flow ho isi purpose se voltmeter ka resistance zyada hota hai fir bachcho ka question ye hota hai ki voltmeter ko agar series mein hi connect kar de to kya सो बेटा वोल्ट मीटर वोल्टेज गिनने वाला एंड वोल्टेज इज टू बी मेजर बिटवीन टू पॉइंट एंड इफ यू विल कनेक्ट इट इन सीरीज देन हाउ इट विल मेजर दोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस दैट कंडक्टर सो बेसिकली इट हैज टू बी कनेक्टेड पैरलली एंड एज इट हैज टू बी कनेक्टेड पैरलली देयर फोर इट्स रेजिस्टेंस मस्ट बी हाई बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इट हैपन्स की हाई रेजिस्टेंस होता है इसलिए इसको पैरलली जोड़ा जाता है लेकिन याद रखें हाई रेजिस्टेंस होने के कारण इसको पैरलली नहीं जोड़ा जाता है बल्कि इसे पैरलली जोड़ना है इसी वजह से इसका रेजिस्टेंस ज्यादा रखा जाता है ताकि इसमें से कम से कम करंट फ्लो हो अंडरस्टूड लेट्स डिस्कस द मेन टॉपिक ऑफ द लेसन इलेक्ट्रिक करंट आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू कि करंट इज फ्लो ऑफ समथिंग एंड इफ इट इज फ्लो ऑफ चार्जेस देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज इलेक्ट्रिक करंट सो इन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ फिजिक्स करंट इज डिफाइंड एज द रेट एट विच चार्जेस आर फ्लोइंग थ्रू अ गिवन क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ऑफ कंडक्टर पर यूनिट टाइम मतलब दिए गए समय में दिए गए पॉइंट के अक्रॉस में हाउ मेनी कूलम ऑफ चार्जेस आर मूविंग इज कॉल्ड एज इलेक्ट्रिक करंट ओके इलेक्ट्रिक करंट इज गिवन बाई आई इज इक्वल टू क्यू बाई टी दैट इज रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ चार्जेस नाउ क्यू इज द नंबर ऑफ कूलम ऑफ चार्जेस टी इज टाइम एंड करंट इज मेजर्ड इन द यूनिट कॉल्ड एस एम्पियर देर को वन एम्पियर इज इक्वल टू वन कूलम अपॉन वन सेकेंड देर को we can say that the current flowing across a point is of 1 ampere if one coulomb of charge is flowing per second the si unit of current is ampere and the device which we use to measure the electric current is called as ammeter so the device which is used to measure the current is ammeter and ammeter is to be connected in series and as it is to be connected in series its resistance must be low because if its resistance will be high then the total resistance of the circuit will increase and it is going to affect the current flowing through the circuit adversely so as to prevent it it is to be connected in series okay now there are some मल्टीपल यूनिट ऑफ करंट ऑल्सो लाइक करंट कैन बी मेजर्ड इन किलो एम्पियर वन किलो एम्पियर इज इक्वल टू टेन टू द पावर थ्री एम्पियर इट कैन बी मेजर्ड इन मेगा एम्पियर वन मेगा एम्पियर विल बी इक्वल टू टेन टू द पावर सिक्स एम्पियर इट कैन ऑल्सो बी मेजर्ड इन मिली एम्पियर वन मिली एम्पियर इज इक्वल टू टेन टू द पावर नेगेटिव थ्री एम्पियर इट कैन ऑल्सो बी मेजर्ड इन माइक्रो एम्पियर One micro ampere is equal to 10 to the power negative six ampere. So, in this way, the current of small and big units will be known to you because while solving the numericals, this all knowledge will be coming to you. Conventionally, the direction of flow of current is taken to be. 
from the region of higher potential towards the region of lower potential so the conventional flow of current is from the positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal of the battery but the electronic current is actually the flow of electrons and the flow of electrons always takes place from negative terminal to the positive terminal that is from the region of lower concentration lower potential towards the higher potential so conventional current flows from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery and electronic current or actual flow of current is from negative terminal of battery towards the positive terminal of the battery now let me summarize the topics that we learned today earlier it was introduction to the electricity then we had a short discussion on an electric charge and its unit and something about the number of coulomb of charges possessed by an electron then it was the concept of conductors and insulators where i told you that conductors are substances having three electrons and the insulators are the substances which don't have free electrons then it was voltage jahan par humne experimentally ye samajhne ka prayas kiya ki how energy difference is required to do work so as to move charge from one of the point in an electric circuit to the other then it was voltmeter which is the uh, device which we used to measure the voltage across two points and its high resistance device and it is always connected parallelly then after it was electric current that is rate at which the charges are flowing across a given uh, cross sectional area and its si unit then the definition of 1 ampere and then the device which we use to measure the electric current and how that device is connected in the circuit and why it is connected in the circuit in that manner so in the next class we'll cover the topics like ohm's law resistance and resistivity that's all for today